Hey there, Patty Dominguez with episode 128 of the Positioning to Profit podcast. Today is a solo show. I am sharing with you the very lofty promise of how to control risk of failure in your project or for your project, I should say. So you're going to love this episode. I'm going to walk you through a thought process that will virtually eliminate Virtually, okay? I mean, I can't guarantee it 100%. Come on. But it's going to help you to mitigate risk of failure. That is huge. It's putting, I'm putting it all on the table. It's going to happen. So stick with me. This episode is super exciting for that purpose. I got you. Because I get it, right? Like you're thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have this launch. I have this project. I'm not sure how to do this. Or you've put all the steps in place, but yet you're still fearful. Fear creeps up. It's a real thing. I get it. So this show you're going to want to pay special attention to because as a matter of fact, if you go to the show notes, if you head over to my website, you could go to pattydominguez.com or if you just go to positioningexpert.com, you'll land on my website, go to this podcast, 128, and I got a little something, something there for you that you'll want to check out. Okay. So again, just go to positioningexpert.com land on the page episode 128 for all the goods okay and with that i am super excited thank you so much hit the subscribe if you haven't done so leave a review if you haven't done so either because that way i know that you are resonating with this content cool all right with that let's get on with the show here we go Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. All right, Solo Show, thank you for checking this out, this episode. All right, I got something for you. It is quite often the case that people get all freaked out because, I mean, let's face it, you launch something and there's the probability that it could go off rails, right? I mean, how many of us have put out something and I can tell you for certain it's happened to me with all the best intentions in the world. I feel like everyone has to go through that rite of passage where things kind of go off rails and it's all a matter of figuring out how you handle it in the midst of that chaos. However, there is something that you can do that you can incorporate as part of a new process, right? Because it's all about building the right kind of systems in your business that are working for you so that it frees you up. The discipline of creating systems and processes will free you up. The irony there, right? It's the discipline that gives you the freedom. But I wanted to share this with you because we were talking about this in my inner circle about how this is a really handy way to mitigate risk when you're launching something new. When you're putting something new out there, like a big undertaking, let's say you're launching a new product, a new service, a new offering, could be for launch, all the things. And here it is. Now, I'm going to take you a little bit back to my corporate days when in my corporate days, one of the things that we worked on a whole lot was uh, post-mortems, okay, post-mortems, because we would do big, big projects, and then at the end of it, you wanted to know, okay, what worked, what didn't work, why didn't it work, how can we improve on the process, okay, that was a post-mortem, and it was very much a part of projects when it was a really big project that we would have at the end. Here's the catch, What if we can incorporate that at the beginning of a project? So in other words, why wait until the end of a project post-mortem when you could do something before the project launches pre-mortem? So so again, the post-mortem, the idea is, is it's usually performed at the end of a project to determine what worked, what did it, why the project was a success or why it failed. But what if we flip the script on this concept and put out a pre-mortem and where we are anticipating kind of t- leaping time, you know, going into time say six months or 12 months, depending on what timeline would make sense for you and think about what could have gone wrong, right? Putting yourself going into the future six to 12 months, 
right? Whatever's relevant to you and thinking about what could have go wrong in that project. So the time to use this pre-mortem idea is before the project launches, obviously, when it's a bigger project, where it's a high stakes type of project. And the idea here is if, if there is a lot of uncertainty and you have a cast of characters, people on your team that are working on things, they're gonna be looking at things from a different perspective. So it's really advantageous when you have this pre-mortem type of meeting because it allows for people to put in their two cents because you're gonna be thinking about things in a different way way right pre-mortem so the steps to it are if you have a team obviously you want to include your team the people that are being are that are going to be involved in the project and if you can do it of course on zoom you can do it in person with whatever is relevant to you and I am a big fan of post-it notes and whiteboarding so I'm big on mind mapping so you could do it that way and you're basically step number one is brainstorming what could go wrong I know that sounds really goofy but it's literally you're finding the obstacles finding the hurdles finding the challenges of what could go wrong with your project and without any judgment you want to welcome any of the responses of what people are saying right take a look at it from the perspective of what could go wrong from a people standpoint what could go wrong from a processy standpoint what could go wrong and so with that, in each one of the post-it notes, you want to write down all the ideas of what could go wrong. Brainstorm freely for whatever period of time you feel until all of the potential what could go wrongs have been exhausted and you've thought about every single possible thing that could go wrong. All right, step number two, you want to group those answers into similar themes, right? So again, because in step number one, you've brainstormed without any judgment or without holding back, you're then going to group all of the things of, okay, are there common themes here that we can group that so that you're paring down this ginormous list of post-it notes and possibilities, and you're kind of bringing it down into different types of categories. So you're grouping similar answers cool and then number three you're going to notice trends what is more of a priority to address right what is the most likely thing to happen and and how serious is it and what can we do to control it okay so once you have your similarly grouped themes, you're gonna then take a look at each one of those topics or themes, and then you're gonna prioritize, okay, of these three to five themes, right, after you've grouped them, what is most likely to happen? Or what is a really serious thing that we have to address? And that will allow you to prioritize things in the pre-mortem. And when you can prioritize things, think about then what you can do to how to mitigate that risk, how to deal with that challenge. Think about ideas. Here's where your critical thinking skills come into play because you're going to be then addressing the most pressing challenge or hurdle or obstacle or thing that is most likely to happen. You're going to put that at the top, right? And then you're going to think about, okay, now what can we do with this hurdle, challenge, thing that can go wrong? And what can we do to mitigate that? What can we do? Ask yourself that question, jot down all the possible scenarios of answers, and then ask yourself, what should we do? Right? Because there's a difference between what can, what you can do and what you should do. And third question, what else haven't you considered? Again, just jotting down using critical thinking to think about all of the possible solutions for those hurdles, for those obstacles, etc. And then out of that, you build your contingency plan. A contingency plan is basically, yes, you have an ideal outcome, but what is the backup if that ideal outcome doesn't happen? So that's the way that you are looking at those obstacles and challenges head on you're thinking through the different types of solutions and then as a result of that you have a plan in place a plan a which is your optimal scenario and then a plan b in case other stuff happens because 
that's just life. Stuff happens, right? So this whole process of a pre-mortem, starting from what could go wrong, jotting all those things down without judgment, and then number two, grouping them into some into similar themes so that you're going from a huge list of post-its, pairing it down to three to five themes, then you're going to prioritize those themes. And then step number three, you're just going to be thinking about, all right, how do we mitigate the risk? What are some possible solutions what can we do here what should we do here and what else have we not considered and from there that's when you build your plans okay and the reason why this works is that you are looking at the failure potential and then you're literally putting the kibosh on failed attempts and you're putting solutions ahead of any failure possibly happening and that's why it's called pre-mortem The reason why it works is because you're also getting feedback in the cases where you have a team, you're getting different perspectives. And so there's this group think element that happens where people are coming together, looking at things from a different perspective, and that's going to make the feedback so much more well-rounded. And so the idea here is that you're challenging each other to say, imagine that we have done this project and it was a disaster. So that almost also deflates the fear. It's bringing to surface, it's bringing to the table all of the things that go wrong, all of the things that you're actually scared about that you're maybe not even wanting to talk about. You're bringing them out. You're bringing them out to the table. You're addressing it. And there's something really healthy about that, that that will help to diffuse the fear so it no longer becomes an issue. So I think this is such a powerful practice of implementing a pre-mortem anytime that you have a big project that is on the table and maybe it's really costly project or you're thinking about the time element around launching something so big. So it really behooves you to put together this pre-mortem process right at the beginning of the project so that you are literally dealing with any potential fear head on you're challenging it you're putting it out on the table and you're saying okay what could go wrong let's address it what are the solutions that we have on the table that are possible and then how do we build plans to mitigate that risk it's absolutely priceless so uh, the person that came up with that concept of pre-mortem to give proper credit where credit is due is an author by the name of gary klein he talks it uh, he talks about it in a book called the power of intuition I am all about tapping more into your intuitive sense because this is something that in business is priceless and I believe not talked about enough is utilizing intuition, trusting that your intuition is guiding you in the right direction. And I can get really woo about that. My clients know that this is something that it's so important for us to honor more is our intuition. It's never going to guide us in the wrong direction. And this is just one example of how you can activate on this concept of your intuition in a really purposeful and productive manner. All right. So I hope this was helpful. The pre-mortem concept, again, I'm going to include the mind map. You can head on over to the show notes. If you just go to positioningexpert.com, you'll see the podcast episode number 128. It'll take you to the page. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you can jump in and take a look at the way I've mind mapped this out. All right. Hope this was helpful. And of course, reach out, let me know how you enjoyed the show and leave a review. And we'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out this episode of Positioning to Profit. Please leave a review if you have gained a benefit from this episode. I appreciate it greatly and I will give you a shout out on the show as well. I so appreciate the ratings and reviews. Okay, also for the Positioning Extravaganza, head over to PositioningToProfit.com. There's lots of goodies over there. It's a treasure chest of freebies as well as beautiful courses that will help you to establish your category of one and move your brand forward. And again, connect with me over on socials or on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I'm on the socials. So I hope to connect with you there and I look forward to catching up with you real soon.